Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, here tonight on the Turn 3 Racing Network. It is the Upstate Racing League here with the Arts Barber Shop 150 from the Southern National Motorsports Park. My name is Roger Muth. I'll be up here in the booth with my great colleague, Kelly Daw. Kelly, another great Thursday night of short track racing action on the verge here with the Upstate Racing League. Yeah, these guys always put on a great show. I'm always looking forward to uh, getting on the mic here with these guys every week. And yeah, a little bit of a little bit of a shakeup this week with you running the show instead of KR. But I think we'll manage. You've uh, watched these guys before. You've been on the mic with these guys before, and I think you'll know what to expect. And that's another great short track race from these guys. Especially with the Upstate Racing League, the drivers, some of the best short track racing drivers on the iRacing service right now. Qualifying is happening here tonight at the Southern National Raceway Park here. And right now, Matthew uh, Barkhouse is currently at the top of the leaderboards here for this race here tonight, presented by Arts Barbershops, our friends over there. We got to thank them for tonight. Tonight's race will be 150 laps when we do get to that portion of the event. Let's take a quick look here, though, at our R&R &R Auto 125 top three finishers from last week and our race information here tonight last week justin fuller joe schaefer and steph maranak were able to go one two and three across the start finish line at the end of that one tonight though it will be 150 laps the distance here i believe it is and check out that little track there just sort of a bull ring kelly this track here tonight is very small there's not a lot of room especially in the corners if something were to happen out in front of you the whole kind of racing surface will get wadded up into each other yeah, it seems like a really wide track, but there really is only kind of one lane around here, and that is that bottom. The turns are very tight, and they're very steeply banked, so it's going to be on these guys to just try to get as good of a launch out of these corners to try to kind of set up any passes they may want to attempt. It's really going to be all about that exit speed, getting to the inside of the other guy, and trying to get to that bottom lane. Well, we'll see if some of our strong competitors from last week are able to get that bottom lane rolling here tonight or if they get freight trained to the outside groove. Steph Marinak comes in leading our points championship after the R&R &R Auto 125 last week. He leads Mike Alexander by seven points currently in the points championship. Then it's going to be the posse driver of Bill Martin, who is sitting third in the championship standings. He has 27 points out, but that's not unsurmountable. He could have a great finish here tonight, and Alexander and Marinak could have a, call it lackluster performance, and he could be right towards the top of those boards by the end of the night. Brian Hacker, the driver that's maybe more known for his dirt ability out of Illinois, he is sitting fourth in the championship standings, 33 back. He has a one-point gap deficit between the fourth and the fifth place driver of Joe Schaefer Jr., who sits 34 four points out of the championship lead. Sixth is uh, Fuller, then it's McDuff, Hamill, uh, Ed Edison, and then Fortin. That's your top 10 coming into this round. And Kelly, those drivers inside the top 10, some very strong competitors, but just outside that top 10, you got McLean, Rogers, Bartles, uh, McIntyre, and then Smith is also right there. Tonight, one slip, and some of those drivers could propel themselves into the top 10 as some fall out. Yeah, and that top 10 is what we're going to have to keep our eye on. We're past the halfway point in the regular season. By the end of, or by the pretty much beginning of January, we'll be starting the chase. So these guys only have uh, this race and another three to kind of try to get themselves into the chase or really secure their position in the chase. So guys like Hamill, Edson, Fortan are going to be trying their best to get a good finish tonight to try to keep themselves in the chase while Smith, McLean, and Rogers are all going to be just trying to fight their way in and kind of get close up to that cut line. Well, we're going to find out qualifying is starting to wrap up here tonight. It is Joe Schaefer currently on that provisional pole, but you know where I believe Kelly is that we lock in. I forget now at, after reading through the 16. notes here, top 16 and everybody else has to go to that last chance qualifier, which will be 20 laps. The top eight will transfer on find out who those drivers will be here in just a couple of seconds as I believe two drivers that did not it will be Jay Dubuque and Devin Johnson currently have yet to turn in a qualifying attempt here race fans we do got to welcome you all here tonight to the turn three racing network we appreciate each and every one of you guys tuning in here to watch some of the best short track racers on the iRacing service this is the upstate racing league and qualifying is officially starting to wrap up and as that happens we will take a quick break we'll be back here in under 30 seconds. 
Kabang Energy Candy contains 100% of vitamins B6, B12, and C, plus ginseng. And the best part is no caffeine. Kabang Energy Candy is sold everywhere, including participating Walgreens. Kabang Energy Candy, it's bangalicious. The Upstate Racing League Season 10 on the Turn 3 Racing Network is brought to you by Butt Kicker. Feel what you've been missing. Arts Barbershop. R&R Auto. Welcome back to the Southern National Motorsports Park. We are gridding up for the last chance qualifier. There will be 13 cars in this race. 20 laps, top eight move on to the show with two points provisionals for the remainder. So, Roger, I believe we should get down to our starting grid to figure out who's going to be going to battle here for these 20 laps. Yeah, and this is how they will actually line up here for the last chance qualifier tonight. It will be starting on the front row. The driver of the number 12 it is Brian Rogers Jr. Starting in position number two, driving the number one, one, two machine. This is Drew Crybet. Starting in position number three, driving the 03 out of the Bassetti Racing entry at Speedy for set. Starting in position number four, driving the number 20, Arts Barbershop Empire Race Team. It's the number 20 of Justin McDuff. Starting in the fifth position, driving the number 87, it is Matt Eddy. Starting sixth, driving the 64, or one of those rookies, it is Andrew Plank. Starting in the seventh spot, driving the 77, it's the Wiley veteran of Jeremy Watkins. Starting eighth here tonight, driving the number seven for the Carpenter Esports race team, it is Jeremy Carpenter. Starting ninth tonight, driving the number 45, one of those rookies also, it is Justin Smith. Rounding out the top 10, racing for the Smith Racing Inc. entry, the driver out of New York, it's the number one of Wild Wade McDuff. Starting in the 11th position, driving the number nine, it is Brian Jones. Starting 12th, it is Colin Phillip in the number 53. Just outside the top 12, it is going to be Matt Huff, or Huth, I believe, and that will be our final driver to take to the grid tonight. We've got 13 drivers all fighting for eight spots, and really with the uh, the extra two points provisionals, we're only going to send three guys home, unfortunately, but nobody really uh, keeps track of the points, at least while they're driving, so everyone's going to be gunning for that top eight and not wanting to leave it up to those points, so... We're going to have to really keep an eye on that cutoff line and see if those guys are going to be battling back there. So top eight advance here out of this one with 20 laps the distance. Uh, yellow flag laps, caution laps, whatever you want to call them. They do not count here tonight. So we will finish all green flag laps before we head into the main event tonight for the Arts Barber Shop 150. I racing pace car lights are off. Next time by, we will unleash the superpowers here of the super late models here tonight. Kelly, thanks for being up here in the booth with me. I hope you pulled your belts tight. Don't fall out of the chair because these boys, we know we're going to put on a show. Yeah, the LCQ always going to be scrappy as everyone tries to fight their way into the main event because the big show is what's going to matter the most. Pace car down in the way. Green flag immediately comes out and that catches the 12 sleeping. As we see the 60 or the 112 Drew Krybeck immediately jump out to the lead and that 12 of Brian Rogers struggling now. He's able to slot into third. But that 64 machine trying to work that outside lane. Andrew Plank really seeing if he can work the high line. And right now we're trying to see who's going to be able to work that high line or not. And Plank so far still hanging it out to that outside. He has fallen to the, or not fallen, but he has gained one position up to position number five. Matt Eddy still working the inside group in that 87 machine down to the bottom group. He stays. I'm surprised the G Fuel entry there of Plank has been able to hang on a little bit of a slide there by Speedy, who's running currently in the fourth spot. All these drivers currently locked in with just 17 laps to go. Laps are going to tick off just in the blink of an eye. Yeah, I don't think he can carry quite enough momentum on that high lane, and Andrew Plank now will finally slot down into seventh place behind Jeremy Carpenter, really caught between the sevens here. He's got the seven of Carpenter in front of him, the 77 of Watkins behind him, but 
he does have that buffer of the 77 holding off that cut line who's just trying to hold off Justin Smith in that 45, trying to race his way into the, the main event. As that battle cruises there on the bubble, look at the race for the race lead here. Krybeck holding off McDuff currently with just 15 laps to go. Everybody except for one driver, it looks like the 21 has just taken his machine to pit row, but here comes the Arts Barbershop number 20. McDuff to the inside, contact for the race lead. Big slide from the 112. He's going to hold on to it. However, he is going to lose position. Brian Rogers able to jump out to the lead. And Brissett going to see if he can try his luck on the high side. Though the other two on the bottom are going to regain their momentum pretty soon. And that's going to cost the 03s. He's now going to lose position. Oh, there's another slide. 87. Matt Eddy, he's going to go sideways. Caution is out. So that'll be the first caution flag here of the evening coming out with just 13 laps to go here in the last chance qualifier. We'll wait for the truck to queue that one up, but it looks like Matt Eddy and possibly one other driver, I believe that might be on our screen. It's showing the number one. I'm not quite sure which car that actually is here currently on our timing and scoring. I believe that is the number one of actually Wayne McDuff. So we'll go back here and check out what happened to Matt Eddy on this one. Let's take the turn three racing replay back here. As you see the 87 to the outside of the number seven of Jeremy Carpenter down here in the corner. Andrew Plank just behind and uh, the right front to the left rear. Slight contact there turning Matt Eddy around. Yeah, and just afterwards as uh, drivers were kind of checking up and trying to get past this, Colin Phillip in the 53, he got a bit of a kind of, I think he got into the 45 in front of him and then got hit by the one behind him and sent for a spin as well uh, and bounced off that inside wall. So. He was able to immediately get it back rolling. He's still out there. Hopefully he does not have too much damage to that car. Taking a quick look at it, the front end is kind of bashed up, but hopefully it will be enough to last another 13 laps. Yeah, we watched that bag, and that looked like just a chain reaction. Everybody trying to stay out of that uh, wreck that was happening out ahead of them. And unfortunately, there is some nose damage to that number 53. We will take an eye and keep an eye on the rookie of the 53 there, Phillip, to see if he can hang on. Currently, he is inside that transfer position. He is the position number eight machine. Wayne McDuff is right behind him with Jones and then Eddie behind. So we'll see if he can hang on and how much nose damage is actually done. Because these cars, they can overheat here. It is short track racing. There's not a lot of room to go out and get clean, fresh air to the nose. Yeah, so he's going to have to race with one eye on his temps and just hope that this car can make it the rest of the way. It was a bit of a, not too hard of a hit, so I don't think it's really going to cause much damage to the radiator, but it could definitely, as you said, affect the, the airflow through the engine. But lights are now out on the pace car. We're going to get back rolling here in just a second. So it'll be Brian Rogers, Drew Kryback, and then Speedy's going to be starting on that inside lane, so that's a good starting spot for him. Then it's going to be McDuff, Carpenter, Watkins, Smith, Philip Jones, McDuff, your top 10 drivers. Green flag back into the air here in the last chance qualifier. Let's see if we can finish this one off here as we go back down into turn number one. It is the 12 and the 112 battling for the race lead. Rogers down on the bottom. He's not going to be able to get Kryback. Kryback will power ahead in turn three. And that was surprising. I was not expecting that outside lane to be able to be effective, but Krybeck got a fantastic jump on that start. Now here comes Brissett. He's going to be able to hold on to third position. McDuff trying to find his way to the bottom now as the freight train starts to roll by him. Here comes Carpenter on that bottom side, and there's not much gap between Carpenter and Justin Smith right behind him. Is the, actually now the entire field kind of forming up on that bottom lane. Back to spell pretty much disaster for the Arts Barber shot number 20 of Justin McDuff because now he's going to lose this spot here to the seven of Carpenter as he has a small window of time. He's not going to be able to fill the hole. Justin Smith is going to be right there. And then it's going to be the 77 as now look at the 20. He dives it down to the bottom. He does have a spot there in front of Justin Smith. So Justin cuts Justin a little bit of a break and now McDuff has, has to go to work. But the battle is going to be back here for the 53 of oh, Philip as McDuff is right there also. That's the battle for the final transfer spot as we have eight laps to go here in the last chance qualifier. And of these five drivers that will not race their way in, they're gonna have to hope for them to have enough points to get the last provisional, but that one of McDuff is gonna have to close the gap on to kind of on the 53 to kind of secure his position. He has not had very much luck throughout the season. Now he's gonna get a little loose, and that's gonna allow Matt Eddy to kind of get to that inside line. He's still loose, getting a little bit of a slide on the entry into turn one there. 
that's not going to help either of those drivers now because they're going to have to battle. Eddie's going to slide in contact. McDuff up the speedway. That's going to open up the door. Here comes Plank also. So Wild Wayne going to go from running in ninth position. Now he's back to 11th. And with just five laps to go because it was the high five from the flagman that time by, the laps are going to count even quicker here. Ryback still out front. 14 second laps. These laps will tick by very quickly as the Drew Kybeck holding off Brian Rogers. Rogers seems to be content to just hold on to second place here. He's in a transfer spot. It doesn't make much of a difference to have one more position on the starting lineup. Ooh, he nearly gets tagged by Brissett. Looks like Brissett may have missed his Sideways for point. the 45, and there's still sideways back here. I believe that's the 53. Caution flag will fly. Two laps to go with a caution flag coming out here as a couple drivers and maybe some uh, tempers there. Jordan Smith to Colin Phillips as those were the two drivers that were sideways here when the caution flag came out. I don't believe anybody else was really involved in that one. Everybody just kind of bunched up here. We'll watch it back. There's the contact, the 77 into the 45, and that's what threw the caution very sideways for Justin Smith. He was able to hang on to it. Yeah, some great wheel work to recover that car. and. Kind of using the uh, the banking to his advantage. He gets a little bit of help from the 77 as well to straighten him back out, but does trigger the caution flag, and that's going to end up sending the 77 to the rear of the field is what I have heard from race control. They are going to place the blame on the 77 car, so with only a couple laps left, he's going to be all the way back in 12th place. Yeah, that's uh, pretty much might put the nail in the coffin for the 77 of Jeremy Watkins, the veteran driver out of New York. Has, I mean, we're only taking eight, so he'll restart. It looks like, what is that, 12th position? He'll have to pick up a handful here and we'll have to pick him up in a hurry. Yeah, he's gonna have to run for it, or at least hope that he's got enough points to kind of get the provisional. However, he's only 28th in points, so there's not too many people that he is beating, but they're, from what I'm looking through real quickly, there are a few names that are in this race that he's beating, so. Hopefully it will be enough to get him into the main event or else he'll be one of those few drivers that will be sent home tonight. So right now with two laps to go, when we do fire him back off, it'll be Grybeck Rogers, uh, Speedy sitting there in the third position, Justin McDuff, then it's Carpenter, then it'll be Phillips, Eddie, and McDuff, your top eight. That's Wayne McDuff, who's running currently in the eighth position and the final transfer spot here into the Arts Barber Shop 150. That'll be coming up in just a little bit. Well, the iRacing pace car lights are off. That means next time by, we're going to fire them back off with just two laps to go. Looks like it will be a single file start here. So everyone kind of getting in one single lane. And it will be all in the control of Drew Krybik with Brian Rogers just behind him. Pace car is going to dive off. Green flag immediately comes out. And a great launch from Krybik opens up a huge gap over that 12. But got to keep an eye on that transfer spot. Wayne McDuff holding on as best he can. Got to keep that 64 behind him. It'll be one lap to go here in Wayne McDuff as we focus in here on the bubble position. The snap on Sarah Cerebral Palsy Foundation number one. One lap to go here. Andrew Plank really pushing it into turn number one. Can he get that number 64 around the number one? McDuff sideways going into three. He will be able to hang on to be private. So winning the last chance qualifier. Fantastic driving from all drivers involved here. Krybik wins the LCQ and McDuff holds on to that final transfer spot. Take a look here quick if we can at our running order as they came across the start finish line. There it is, Krybeck, Rogers, Speedy Brissett, and then Justin McDuff, Jeremy Carpenter, Colin Phillips, Matt Eddy, and Wayne McDuff all will transfer on. Plank, Jones, Smith, Watkins all will have to rely on hopefully having more points than the other here at this point. 45 and 64 is the call from the tower. Those are the two drivers that will be moving on from the provisional positions. So that's the 64 of Andrew Plank and the 45 of Justin Smith. So those are our two provisionals. And for those that uh, are maybe a fan of Speedy Reset, we've seen you guys in the chat before, and I'm sure you guys are going to be very excited. Speedy, J Speedy Reset has made the main event for the first time this season. Well, that's a feat when you go up against some of the best iRace short track drivers in the world to be able to say you will make the big show here tonight for the Arts Barber Shop 150. But as we are here under our warm-up session, we will take a quick break here. 
from the virtual Turn 3 Racing booth, and we'll be back to bring you the feature event presented by Arts Barbershop. The Upstate Racing League Season 10 on the Turn 3 Racing Network is brought to you by M&M Country Store, Dr. Noise Custom Paint and Diecast, Coach's Corner, Kabang Energy Candy, State Racing League Season 10 on the Turn 3 Racing Network is brought to you by Best Colorful Creations, the official cake supplier of the Upstate Racing League, Carpenter's Tax Service, Sunni's Country Market, Welcome back here race fans to the Arts Barber Shop 150 here tonight for the Upstate Racing League. It is time to go racing in our feature event. Let's head on down trackside for the starting lineup. This is how they will start for the Arts Barber Shop 150. Starting on row number one, driving the number 18 for the Empire Racing, uh, racing Team, it is AJ Hamill. It's the 11 Illinois of Brian Hacker who will start to the outside. Justin Fuller, position number three in his 51. Starting fourth, it'll be G-Man Guillaume Fortin, starting in the number 13, position number four. Dr. Noise racing the 39. The posse of Bill Martin will start fifth. Sixth, the Matthew Barkhouse in the number 15. Mike Alexander's got the 75. Rev Racing starting seventh. Eighth is going to go to Joe Schaefer Jr. in the number six machine. Jimmy McIntyre is in ninth with the 81. And then it'll be the boss man, Al Smith Jr., rolling off 10. 
Row number six is going to see the 88 of Matt McLean on the inside and the 98 of Chris Stump on the outside in 12th place. Brett Bartels will be rolling off in 13th with a 17 of AJ Rogers starting 14th to his outside. 15th, we see the 25 of Trey Edson with Andy Lambert on his outside. That is the last guy to make it in on qualifying. Drew Krybeck, we saw him win the LCQ with a fantastic jump off the start. He'll be starting in 17th with Brian Rogers Jr. starting in 18th. Row number 10 sees the 03 of J. Speedy Brissett and the 20 starting in 20th of Justin McDuff. Starting 21st to go to the number 7 of Jeremy Carpenter to be Colin Phillips in the 53, 22nd, Matt Eddy, 23rd, 24th, the Wayne McDuff in the number 1, Andrew Plank, 25th, and Brian Jones, 26th. Actually, it'll be Plank, then Smith, rounding out your 26th car field here tonight. Cars now stacking up. It's going to be the 18 and the 11. These guys have gotten into each other a couple times over the last couple weeks. Let's see if Sparks will fly once again. Pace car is going to now dive to the safety of pit road. Green flag immediately comes out. And again, it catches our full sitter sleeping as the 11 of Brian Hacker jumps out to the lead with Guillaume Fortin trying to follow him through. AJ Hamill's going to go sideways off of turn two. He's going to go around on the Arch Barber shot number 18. And he will come to arrest a couple of them piling in. It's the 112 of Drew Krybeck also coming down there. The Epic Media number 112, he is involved. So our pole center of AJ Hamill off the jump here, off a of turn number two has gone around to bring out the first caution flag here of the night. Kelly, that did not take long at all. No, it looks like these guys just kind of forget that with the new tire model that are on these cars, you've got to get those tires up to temperature. The first couple laps, those things are not going to want you to just stomp on the pedal and we saw both the 13 and the 18 kind of synchronized slides there off the exit, but the 13 had a bit of a, a bit of a gap behind him, had enough space for the guy behind him to check up. But unfortunately for the 18 of AJ Hamill, Justin Fuller just had no time to react, ended up just tagging him and helping him around. Watching back, you can see a terrible start there by the 18 of AJ Hamill as he works the bottom of the speedway and sideways, he opened sideways and then just nowhere to go. Then AJ was a sitting duck, got sideswiped there by the 112 uh, of Grybeck. Let's check, uh, see if we can go back here just a little bit further. What happened to Drew in his epic media machine as he came off of turn number two? Did he just get sideways also? And, oh, it looks like he went to check up, and that's when. I don't know who that was there, but uh, they got. Percet. Percet, was that who it was there? That looks like uh, the 03 to me. I think he just kind of got a little bit of help from, uh, from the 03 and spun around so just an unfortunate situation for for Krybeck. i mean these cars do not have any brake lights so the only time you uh you kind of realize the guy in front of you is braking is when he starts to get bigger in your your windshield looks like they're starting to line up side by side here and that will put brian hacker now to the front with uh guillaume guillaume gonna start to the outside in that rumar vinyl designs 09 motorsports entry yeah, I'd watch that 13. He was quick here last season, nearly got his first win, I believe it was at this track last year. So I'd expect for uh, the 13 of Guillaume Fortin to be a very strong driver tonight. But at the same time, nearly anyone in this field is a very strong driver. Yeah, this field is stacked. It is the 10th season for the Upstate Racing League this season, running the super late model as the iRacing pace car dives in. We go back to green flag racing. Hacker with a quick start, quick squirt out to the bottom side here. He'll come out of turn two as the race leader as Fuller works the inside with his 51. Guillaume just stuck to the outside at this point. He will find a home in one lap going from the front to running third. Yeah, I think he just kind of realized that battling Fuller was going to hurt him more than it was going to help him on that outside lane. He just kind of lifted off, dropped back, and slotted in between Fuller and Martin before Martin could close that gap. So he's got himself in that position. We've got that top four kind of running nose to tail before a bit of a break to the rest of the field. That's also all mostly in single file. Only see a couple drivers that are still on that outside lane as everyone's moved to that bottom, dominant bottom side. As we look back here off Bill Martin's deck lid here, the Dr. Noise Racer, that is Barkhouse back there running in position number five. Ten laps just like that are going to be put into the books this time by here tonight in the Arts Barber Shop 150. And everybody pretty much running around the bottom side of the speedway already. They have all just gone single file. They know at this point they need to turn some laps. 150 laps tonight is a long way to go. Back here running into the 13th position, and it's Brett Martell's in his number 42. He 
was looking to the inside, and then he decided to go right back in the line there behind Matt McLean. And that is Andy Lambert also back here. These drivers were all running those tail for 12, 13, 14th position on the Kumar field. Nobody was side by side. One of them, I believe that was Trey, who was out of the group for just a moment, but he got back down. That was actually speedy as Trey was looking to the inside. And one thing to mention for those of you that are new to the, watching the Upstate Racing League, these guys have no tires in their pit stall. And here comes the 25. Edson gets to the inside of Brissett as Brissett gets loose off of turn two. And that is going to allow that 25 to move on through. Is the 03 going to be able to get down before that 20 gets in place? And he will be able to cover off that bottom line. But as I was saying, these guys have to be careful with their tires. The tires they start on are going to be the tires they finish on. So the name of the game is tire conservation, especially that right front. Now you talk about tires. Look at the guy who's running 17th currently, the driver out of Hudson Falls, New York, the Arts Barber Shop entry. He's having to come from way deep in the field, transferred out of the last chance qualifier here into the main seat and not have himself a good qualifying run here tonight. So being 17th here and already 16 laps in, moving up three spots, he's got to be easy. It's kind of the uh, tortoise in the hare pace here tonight for Justin McDuff. Another thing is with how tight these corners are, they really have to power out of them. And you put the power down too hard, you're going to spin those back tires slightly. And just every time you spin them, it's just going to make things worse and worse as the race goes on. A little bit of shuffling at the front end here. Bill Martin has got around Guillaume Fortin. And while that happened, it kind of brought those next three drivers of Barkhouse, Alexander, and Schaefer Jr. up a little bit closer. So those guys are packed up. But looking just behind them, looks like the 17 of A.J. Rogers trying to get around Jimmy McIntyre. As he'll work down to the inside and it's going to make quick work of that battle so those two will just kind of swap hands there Dixie products number 17 of AJ Rogers out of Virginia will pass number 81 of McIntyre bumping McIntyre out of the top 10 here he did start up into the ninth position so McIntyre down two spots since the drop of the green flag in the first 20 laps of this event here we have only had one caution flag here in the first 20 laps of racing action so good short track racing action so far here tonight as Speedy still holding off in the number 20 of Justin McDuff. That was a battle for just a hot second and they went back to the single file. Hacker though, ever since taking the lead in his number 11 Illinois, the Carbon Junction group, he has been able to hold on to the Smith Racing team as everybody else follows in tow here tonight. Right around the bottom, nobody's been able to go up to the outside and take a look at the 51 of Justin Fuller. Look at the right front. Look at the nose of that car. The driver out of Green, New York. It is an all tour up ever since he made contact with AJ Hamill, putting Hamill to the inside wall there, and then he got into the outside wall also with the right front. And right after that, the cars tore up. Yeah, the car's a little banged up. Hopefully it didn't really knock that right front out of alignment. If it's still tracking straight, it shouldn't really cause much of an issue. I mean, with this track being not even half a mile, Aerodynamics is not going to play much of a part, if any of part, as looking a little bit back in the field, Barkhouse is now shuffled to that outside lane, and he's going to be moved to the back of this uh, lead pack here. Now Schaefer Jr. is going to get underneath him, and Matthew Barkhouse now drops all the way down to the seventh. And that also opens a little bit of a gap in this uh, top seven once again, as Guillaume kind of gets a little bit away from Alexander. Yeah, but Barkhouse did exactly what he needed to do, the young man. He just kind of went right to the outside. Once he knew that that inside lane was going to uh, kind of freight train him, he just lifted, went straight to the back of this pack, didn't try and put too much wheel, too much pressure on those tires. He will now just find a home comfortably running into that seventh position because he's got about a half second gap back to the driver of the coach's corner, number 96 of Al Smith Jr., who runs in the eighth spot. Smith has a mirror full of the 98 of Chris Stubb, but then it's AJ Rogers who rounds out the top 10. Got a battle for the race lead, though, is the 51 of Justin Fuller. He's got to the inside of Hacker. He's going to move him up the racetrack. But Hacker holding on as hard as possible because he sees that big train of cars behind him. He knows there's no gap on that bottom lane, and he is going to start dropping back as Fuller finishes the pass, gets clear. And now Bill Martin fills that gap. Oh, problems for the 11 gets real loose off of turn two. He's going to lose even more ground. Yeah, he's trying to rely on his dirt track skills there as he came off of turn two. All sorts of sideways as they come past the start finish line once again. 
He was your leader. Now he's running back here in fourth as he's trying to hang on to fourth as Alexander still looks to the inside. Sparks off the number six Epic Media Machine there for Schaefer Jr. as he tagged the ball slightly on the back straightaway. Hacker holding on, but it's only a matter of time till that inside lane really starts to kind of be able to hold the grip down there as the grip will go away for Hacker here faster than what it normally would have. Now you see the 75 get a good run, but look at those top three. They are starting to run away from this battle and then they're gonna run themselves right into lap traffic. Yeah, as we mentioned, this is not a very big track, pretty much a bullring under half a mile long. So it's not gonna be, uh, there's not a lot of real estate out here. There's only a few meters really for each car to kind of occupy and they are gonna run up on that lap traffic very quickly here as they are already starting to close in onto the back of the one of Wayne McDuff. So Fuller not gonna be too far from having to deal with lap traffic. However, lap traffic for the most part usually gets out of the way here. And there's a bit of a knock on the door from Bill Martin gets into the back end of Justin Fuller through the middle of one and two. Yeah, short track racing, and especially if you're familiar with short track racing, it is the three tap Teddy rule. Every time you come to a little bull ring like this, tap one, hey, I'm here, tap two, I'm getting a little annoyed, tap three, uh, the game's on you at that point to see where you're gonna wind up. So there was one tap from Bill Martin. Will we see another one here as they approach lap traffic? Will he be able to use that lap traffic as a little bit of a pick if Justin Fuller were to kind of step out of line, make a mistake as now here comes the 39 peeking to the inside. Not gonna quite have the run, just keep showing the nose of that number 39 when they enter the corners. Yeah, he's just putting the pressure on the 51, trying to see if he'll crack and make a mistake, but Fuller just fo laser focused right now, trying to pay it, work on his line, get up to that number one, and I'm gonna expect to see McDuff get out of the way, and yes, he is, he's gonna stick to that high lane. 39, Martin trying to get a good run off the corner, and tries to get back to the 51, but not quite working. And it's really starting to seem like the, the name of the game tonight is just trying to get that power down off the corner and getting the, the exit speed. Yeah, it seems like Martin had a really good line there for a little bit, but Fuller was able to always just quite get to the end of the straightaway. Here comes Martin once again, trying to hook the bottom, and now he's gonna get the fender in there down into current number one. Here comes the 39. He will now go side by side down the back straightaway here on lap number 41. Bill Martin for the first time here as they come out of turn four, he will be the race leader. He will lead a lap here tonight in the Arts Barber Shop 150. Now is how is Justin Fuller going to counterattack? Is he going to be able to keep the pace? And he's actually losing a bit of ground so far to, to Bill Martin. So Fuller has to kind of shake off that pass and figure out how Martin got past them and maybe try to use the same strategy as they're still catching up to more lap traffic. They're going to be getting up to the back end of Plank here shortly. Yeah, it'll be Plank and then it'll be Crybeck and Speedy running who is currently looks like running 22nd as he is actually battling as these two are side by side down here into the corner. They are battling for the 22nd and 23rd position as the race leaders are coming in our hurry. But there is nowhere to go right now. If you are Bill Martin, Speedy's gonna go up the raceway. He's gonna give him a groove down to the bottom side of the speedway here on lap number 45. And I would expect the next driver ahead of them, of Krybeck, to stay out of the way. And he is gonna move to the high lane. Lap traffic for the most part here in the Upstate Racing League that tends to give way, tends to get out of the, everyone's way. And, not try to interfere so these guys are going to play it safe stick to that high lane let the field go by and martin is just starting to check out though he's oh, already contact there speedy into the outside wall right in front of joe schaefer also mike alexander had to take a little evasive actions also everybody will come through it as now who is that down on the inside hacker having a little issues in the number 11 illinois he has to get around the 112 of Ryback and Boy, what a moment that could have been. A couple of the front runners here tonight trying to work their way through lap traffic. One of them just pinballs off the wall. Yeah, and if these guys were kind of just checked out and cruising, that was a bit of a wake-up call as they had to take evasive action, get out of the way, but everyone's able to manage, get themselves out through that cleanly and able to keep going. But as taking a look at the gap that Martin has already opened up, it was only a few laps since he took the lead. He's already up to eight tenths of a second of a lead. So Martin in that 39 machine, he's got it hooked up and he is taking off. Right now it is Bill Martin, then Justin Fuller, and then here comes Mike Alexander as he'll look to the inside to try and put himself into that third position. He made quick work of Guillaume, and Guillaume gonna fall back to fifth as Joe Schaefer filled the hole also.
Guillaume gonna unfortunately drop all the way back into fifth and have to try to work his way back up to the front. That gap the lead now a full second as Fuller has just not been able to find the speed anymore. And he's just trying to focus on holding on to second place as Mike Alexander closing up just a little bit now. Maybe about half a second back to that 51 machine is, is that uh, 75. And everyone's just trying to focus on keeping their cars alive. We're about to a third of the way through this race and they're probably going to be starting to feel those right fronts burning off soon. As they start to feel the tires heat up here, more lap traffic as they work through. There's the 53, that is Colin Phillip. He's going to go a lap down to the race leader here, Bill Martin, who has now opened up even a little bit of a larger gap back to Justin Fuller. There's another battle that's out there on the speedway, and it's the battle that is outside the top 10 in points. Al Smith and Matt McLean, who are running 11th, and 12th in our championship standings are running 10th and 11th currently here tonight on the speedway. Smith has that 10th position and that's a good points bump currently because remember AJ Hamill who had issues on the opening lap here tonight? Well, AJ Rogers is currently back out onto the raceway but he is down on power running in the 26th position. Smith and McLean who are below him in points right now are having themselves pretty solid nights. Yes, yeah, so this is going to be huge. There is one drop week, though, for the uh, the first seven races of the regular season. So that has not been factored in just yet. So we're just kind of counting the points as they run at the moment. So Al Smith only has four points of a, of a lead over Matt McLean. So keeping that car, that 88 machine behind him is going to be absolutely important tonight. That's going to be a, a huge focus is just beat that 88 try to beat anyone that's in front of them like the 18 the 25 or the 13 maybe even the 20 and just try to get as many points as he can here tonight as he's starting to work his own way through the lap traffic Smith will work to the inside and work around speedy in his 03 clarkson sun entry but bill martin still continuing to put on a clinic here little over a second as now he is working on justin smith the rookie who is currently running into the 20th position everybody else Still running that single file. The only battles that you will find is whether your leaders are trying to work through lap traffic as that right now is pretty much compressed because Speedy, who was falling through the faster cars as he was working to the outside, he is now falling back behind the number 20 of Justin McDuff, who has moved up six spots. He currently is our second biggest mover. How about Matt Eddy in the 87 entry? He has moved up seven spots from where he started. He is currently running into that 16th spot. And when you think of the name Matt Eddy on iRacing, you don't think of him having an R next to his name. Well, Matt Eddy here tonight, 39-year-old. He is a rookie here with the Upstate Racing League. Matt running short track racing action all the time, sometimes in obviously the real world side of things, but also here on iRacing. An outstanding short track racer competing with some of the best. Yeah, I think that just goes to show the strength of competition here as Matt Eddy runs currently in 16th. He has made a good amount of moves tonight. He did struggle in the uh, the LCQ and ran into a few problems there, but was able to get his way through that LCQ. And now he's made another pass. He gets by Bartels. And he's up into 15th. So he's continuing to trend upwards. And now he's going to try to go after the other big mover. And that's the 20 of Justin McDuff, who's sitting in 14th. But McDuff is quite a few, uh, or sorry, now McDuff actually got just got past McIntyre. So position will be to McIntyre, but that's about four seconds of a gap between McIntyre and Eddie. And on a track like this, that is pretty much counted as a straightaway, if not just a little more. Lap times here currently for Bill Martin are 15.9. Last time by his quick time tonight was a 14.27. That happened obviously early on in this without lap traffic as he goes around another driver. So now that next one on the cut line will be the Yoo-Hoo driver, Brian Rogers Jr as that Dodge needs to find a little more horsepower because that Mustang is starting to breathe down it. We are 67 laps officially completed here tonight of the 150 for the Arts Barber Shop 150, and it's been only one caution flag tonight. Everybody has mined their own P's and Q's. Look at AJ Hamill, he is back out. He's gonna actually pick up a position here over the G Fuel number 64 of Andrew Plank. AJ Hamill now will run 25th. But he's got the race leader coming. Yeah, and a battle starting to shape up in second place between Justin Fuller and Joe Schaefer Jr. I think Fuller's damage is starting to affect him now. He might be burning off that right front just a little bit more, having to work it a little bit more, as it may have just been knocked out of position when he slammed the outside wall 
on the first lap when we had that little scuffle there. And now Schaefer just needs to try to find a way through. He's trying to dive into the corner a little bit, get a better launch, but doesn't quite work for him as he actually lost a lot of ground through the uh, the middle of that turn and the entry. So we'll have to see what that six can do and if he can find his way to the inside of that 51, because we know that's the only place you're going to pass here tonight. Yeah, the last two times down the back straightaway, that number 51 of Justin Fuller, as we went on board there, you could really hear the RPM sing off the corner. That driver is giving it all she's got at this point. Still a long race to go as we close in on that halfway point. He's going to have to make those tires, Kelly. You talked about it early on. The set of tires they have on the car when they start is the set of tires they will have when they finish tonight. Look at all the marbles. And with Fuller spinning the tires down the back straightaway a handful of times, that's not going to help. He's going to have to cool those tires off, but still maintain the speed to hold off Joe Schaefer. Yeah, the big thing is just when they get the power down, if they stomp on it, they'll spin the tires, and they can easily go for go for a bit of an adventure into one of those walls, either on the inside or the outside, trying to save it themselves from spinning. So they just have to be uh, very sure with their movements, really gentle on the power, and now they're actually getting caught up in some lap traffic here. They've got one car to their outside, one car in front of them, and Schaefer just has nowhere to go, and that's actually going to bring in Mike Alexander, who's going to get a little bit closer to this battle. Yeah, I've been watching that 75 here for a couple of laps, and it really seems like he's able to charge the corner. And then these guys, you know, the accordion effect. You go in the corner, you see everybody start the accordion, and then off the corner as these leaders start to stretch their legs on the accelerator. Alexander then starts to fade. So as he charges the corner, doesn't really hammer down coming off, trying not to spin the tires. As now look at him, he is right there. It is a three-horse race, almost a four-horse race, but Guillaume is kind of back. There's a lap car in between them. Guillaume right there running in the fifth position. So it's Martin Fuller, Schaefer, Alexander, and Fortan. Right now, your top five drivers here as we're over the halfway point tonight in the Ars Barber Shop 150. And now Martin trying to get around AJ Hamill. You're going to put Hamill down two laps as if he can get to that inside. He's actually seeming to struggle to, to even catch up to that 18 and get himself in position to pass. And that's actually allowing Fuller to close the gap just a little bit. He's got it down a, a slight amount, but that's still three, pretty much three and a half seconds between the 39 and the 51. So that is a massive gap. It is now actually over three and a half seconds. And Fuller might actually be kind of slowing down some of these other leaders as like we as we mentioned there's some heavy damage to the right front of that machine and it may be affecting his handling and slowing him up a little bit as the difference between the laps uh, last time was a 15192 for Fuller and a 15170 for Martin so it's actually not too much of a difference but Martin is pretty much right on the bumper of that 18. Somebody who's falling through the field here is the 88 of Matt McLean. He did just get passed up by the 81 of Jimmy McIntyre and Justin McDuff. So McDuff and also Trey was right there in that number 25. He also picked up a spot also. As remember last time we checked back here with Matt McLean, he was running right behind Al Smith. And now Smith is running into the 10th position as he cracks the top 10, but he's got a mirror full of that number 25. The rookie battling with the veteran here as Al's going to actually go up the speedway coming out of turn number two. That'll open up the inside lane. Edson will now fill it, and now here comes the Arts Barber Shop number 20 looking to take a peek. Yeah, both of them got on the power hard there. You see the back end's kind of stepping out, but here comes Smith again, just kind of blowing the corner, getting a little too hot, a little too high up the racetrack, and that's going to open the door for that 20 of McDuff to get on that inside, and he will make the pass as well. So. Smith going to drop back a few positions, and that's going to hurt his hunt for the chase just a little bit. However, still sitting in 12th, still ahead of a couple of his uh, big rivals, but unfortunately, two of his biggest rivals in McDuff and Edson just got past him there. Yeah, we'll have to see because we are halfway home in this main event tonight here on Thursday. So one of them was into the outside wall there. That is actually going to be the number one of Wayne McDuff from the Cerebral Palsy Foundation snap on tools number one that could have been a moment also i say every time somebody gets into the wall it could have been a moment well that's because you know these drivers are all on this short track and there's just nowhere to go somebody makes the bobble and you have nowhere to go we saw it earlier in the event with when aj rogers or aj hamill actually went around aj's are wild here tonight aj hamill went around on lap number one and everybody just kind of ran out of real estate behind him a couple other drivers took the spin right now aj's 
Hamill is still actually able to hold off that number 39 here. I don't know if it's the uh, late run here that maybe Bill Martin's starting to cruise, or can he really not get around the 18? Well, while we were talking about that, though, Joe Schaefer Jr. got around Justin Fuller, and he has turned on the Jets. He is a man on a mission, and his mission is to spend the next 60 laps trying to catch the 39 machine. And he's starting to chip away at that time. He's now put down a 15.017, and last lap, Bill Martin, 15.186. So that would be 30. If he does a tenth every lap, that's going to be 34 laps. He'll still have another 30 laps, essentially, to try to find a way around that 39 machine is if, if he keeps up this pace. And that uh, that lap time is starting to tick away. But at the same time, Martin may just be kind of cruising and saving his tires. Yeah, he has not really seemed to try and apply the pressure here in the Arts Barber shop number 18 for Hamill. Right now, Hamill is currently running in the 22nd position. Martin still has a three second lead, but man, boy, it really is starting to come down. Let's check the lap times at the start finish line. Last time by a 15 1 4 for Bill Martin, a 15 1 5 for Joe Schaefer. So, pretty much identical times between your top two drivers. They're the only drivers on the speedway last time by that were into the 15 1s. Everybody 15 2s and up. And we've mentioned Arts Barbershop in passing a few times tonight. And I think we need to take a moment to thank Arts Barbershop. They are our sponsor tonight. They have been a longtime supporter of the Upstate Racing League and Empire Racing team of AJ Hamill and Justin McDuff. But earlier this year, I believe, or at least coming up, Art is hanging up the scissors. Art will be retiring, so I believe this will be his last season supporting the Upstate Racing League. So we'd like to wish him a happy retirement and thank him for his uh, support throughout these years many years of service and art we thank you for what you not only have done for the community up there but also here with the iRacing community and the upstate racing league there you see justin mcduff with that sponsorship on that car as right now justin mcduff is running the 11th position right out ahead of him that is the side by side that is andrew plank up the speedway in the g fuel number 64. a little bit of a throwback paint scheme to the old mark martin battle lead days and Andrew Plank currently running 25th. One driver is down on pit road here as we hit the 100 lap mark, and that is Wade McDuff sitting down on pit road currently being shown 26th on our time against scoring. Bill Martin has got around the number 18 of A.J. Hamill and set sail. The gap deficit between first and second for Martin and Schaefer, 2.6 second gap now deficit from first to second. Justin Fuller has fallen back to about two seconds, so it's an equal margin between First to second, second to third currently. Mike Alexander still hanging out there in that fourth position. It's where he has been since we pretty much went racing here tonight. Picked up three spots real quick and then kind of sat here running fourth. Guillaume has fallen to fifth and that's where he has stayed as uh, Chris Stump would be the next competitor and he is sitting currently about a second and a half back down the racetrack. So no pressure for Guillaume right now who runs currently fifth. And I think this kind of proves that Bill Martin was just cruising as he has now opened up those lap times, but he has had a bit of trouble getting around that 87, and that did cost him a few tenths of a second. Joe Schaefer now still chipping away at that. He's been putting down some fairly consistent lap times, all kind of hovering around that uh, that 15 second mark, just under about 15.1. Last couple laps have been a little slower now, just going over 15.1, but before that, he's been putting down some really fast times, getting in just a little bit closer to Bill Martin. We're under 50 to go, and he's still got 2.3 seconds to make up. It's going to be close, but if he keeps this pace, he will catch up. Yeah, as we go high and wide here from our Hanson starter shop blip camera here tonight, there you see your race leader of Bill Martin. There you see the 87. That's not the second place machine. You don't even see second place of Joe Schaefer creeping into the picture just yet. That is Eddie in the 87. Then that is, uh, I believe, that's Jimmy McIntyre just out in front of your race leader. That's actually Matt McLean, then Jimmy McIntyre. We're currently still hanging on to the lead lap here tonight. As Bill Martin come across the start finish line, he will lead another one here in the Arts Barber Shop 150. And Bill Martin has had a very strong season. I mean, he's been in the top five in pretty much every race except for the one that he got wrecked out very early on back in Iowa to start the season. So he's had a very strong season, a very consistent season. And if he were to keep this up and win tonight, he'll be the first driver this season to win uh, two races. 
as everyone in every race has been won by a different driver so far, but Bill Martin looking to change that. So what I should not say at this point, Kelly, is the last time I was on the air here with the Upstate Racing League was back at Iowa when Bill Martin had his uh, little mishap. Yeah, we should probably not mention that, but he is looking good so far as he's now kind of stopped uh, Joe Schaefer from chipping away at that lead as that gap is held steady at 2.4 seconds for the last few laps here. And I think uh, Joe Schaefer now starting to have a little bit of issues with the, the traffic that Martin had to work his way through earlier as now Schaefer Jr. has caught up to that 18 of A.J. Hamill. Oh, and Hamill going to go way up the track there. A big bobble that time out of turn number four for the driver. Out of Vermont, Arts Barbershop number 18. That was a huge bobble for uh, A.J., but he was able to hang on to it right there with Joe Schaefer just squeaking by to the inside. So now Joe Schaefer Jr. is clear. He will now set his eyes onto that 87, which would be the next car up the road. Bill Martin still setting song and dance here tonight. 113 laps in the books. It'll be the 88 of Matt McLean now sitting on that bubble seat. And then it's Jimmy McIntyre that's just out in front of him in the iStream TV entry. So these two drivers need to find a little bit of pace here. Bill Martin really going to drive it off. They're almost actually touching the best beautiful creation. Uh, back bumper there of that 88, so looks like McLean will work to the high side of the speedway. Bill Martin will now take him a lap down, so that left currently 13 drivers onto our lead lap. McIntyre and Smith and McDuff will be the next drivers. Al Smith, last time we talked about the driver out of South Glen Falls, New York. This driver was into the 10th position. Trey has got around him along with Justin McDuff, knocking Smith back to the 12th position here just with under 50 laps to go. Yeah, I think a couple of these guys towards the front here are a little bit surprised that they're being lapped. I mean, they probably haven't been lapped this season as we haven't really gone, had some uh, a long green flag run at a bull ring like this. But tonight, everyone's kind of keeping things calm for the most part. And we've been able to stay green and Martin's been able to have uh, been able to work his way through the lap traffic and through the field. And now Joe Schaefer Jr. struggling with this lap traffic. He's gotten around the 87, but that has cost him time. He's now point five seconds down so he is running out of time we're going to be coming up to 30 to go as the 39 of bill martin crosses the line next time by oh, oh crash right in front of the leader in front of him crash right in front of the leader andy lambert has gone around caution flag will come out as the priority auto machine has gone around a couple other drivers involved in this also jimmy mcintyre andy lambert aj hamill involved andrew plank or no, Andrew Plank not involved, excuse me. But the eight of Andy Lambert, heavy contact to the front nose of that eight machine. Yeah, and that all started with Matthew Barkhouse. He was battling with a few other drivers. He's battling with the 25 of uh, Trey Edson and the 20 of Justin McDuff. And then coming off of turn two there, it looks like he was just trying to put the power down on the high side. He's in the, the thick of the marbles and just spun the rear tires, got into the 20. They were able to straighten things up, but the rest of the field coming in after them just did not have time to slow down and kind of got into the back of them, and they will place that on Matthew Barkhouse, so he will move the tail end of the field. Matt Eddy, though, he will get his lap back, so he'll be back on lead lap as he will work his way around the field. So that's unfortunate for a couple of these drivers as we were on the long green flag run as this is only our second caution flag of the night as we go high, wide, and handsome here with the Hanson Starter Shop showing us that wreck as you see the 81 of McIntyre up against the outside fence as he tried to get it pointed in the right direction. Bill Martin still our race leader. When we go back racing, though, it will be under 25 laps to go here tonight. And the Arts Barber Shop 150 here from the Southern National Motorsports Park. And what a good race, though, we have seen so far. This is only the second caution flag of the evening. At this point, race fans, you would say, well, We've had a long green flag run. We've got 123 laps of racing here tonight. Why don't we bring them down pit road? Well, we can't do that. No tires here. Short track racing rules here in the Upstate Racing League do not allow us tire changes when we come here on race night. Yeah, they are the, the ones that they have to stay on these tires. They have to make them last. And for a lot of these guys, they have beat up that right front and even burned off the uh, the rear tires a little bit as we've, we saw just on this last caution. If you get on the throttle too hard, you are going to spin those tires and 
And as you spin them throughout the night, it's just going to get worse and worse. And it's going to be harder and harder to put the power down. But lights are going to go out on the pace car this time around, I believe. And we're going to get back to racing next time. So when we go back racing, it will be just 24 more laps to go here tonight. Bill Martin, Joe Schaefer, Justin Fuller, Mike Alexander, Guillaume Fortin, and that's going to be Chris Stump, Ryan Hacker, A.J. Rogers, Trey Edson, and Justin McDuff rounding out the top 10 machines. Put 24 laps on the board. Let's go back to short track racing action here tonight in the Arts Barber Shop 150. That has brought the field all together. Bill Martin no longer has a two and a half second lead. Joe Schaefer is going to be right with him and he's going to try to chase him down. The rest of the field though, jockeying for position. Fuller is going to be able to barge his way past Mike Alexander, hold on to the third position. That 75 wants to try to get around the 51. And the 39 of the six of Martin and Schaefer Jr. already starting to open up the gap of the field as those two go after each other. Yeah, Chris Stump not able to do anything on that outside lane right now. We talked about it numerous times tonight. He gets stuck to the outside lane as now he's going to try and force his way down. Hacker contact. Hacker is going to go on by. Chris Stump's going to slide up the speedway. He's going to lose one, two, three, possibly more positions yet. He was inside the top five. He will now fall outside the top ten. A big mistake for Chris Stump. He is going to hold on to 10th for the time being. However, Al Smith Jr. going to get around him. Here comes Barkos. Well, oh, sorry, no, that's the, the 88. Oh, contact. Clayton. Smith's going to go sideways. Al Smith had contact there from Justin Mc, or from uh, actually the 98 there of Chris Stump going down into the corner. And that sent Smith sideways in the coach's corner entry. He hung on to it. Stump had to get out of the throttle, and now he's still stuck to the outside. These are lap cars now lined up to the inside. He has some big problems for Stump. He just cannot find his way to the bottom lane, as we have mentioned throughout the night. The bottom line is the fast line. You are not going to make anything happen on that outside lane. Now he's going to finally get down to the bottom and try to recover and have to work his way back up, but he does not have a lot of time. Looking back towards the front, though, we still have this battle for the race lead. Schaefer trying everything to stick with the 39. Just a few laps ago, I saw him get real sideways off of turn four as he tried to just mash on the throttle and power out of the corner and stay with that 39 machine. As those drivers run about half a car length from each other, here comes the 11 Illinois of Hacker to the inside. Sideways for Guillaume. He's going to get turned around here with 16 laps to go. He's that still sideways as the field trying to work his way by and we'll have to take a look and see what happened there. It looks like contact between the 13 and the 25. So that is Guillaume Fortin and Trey Edson kind of battling for uh, a position a little bit further back, which kind of surprised me is uh, the 13 of Fort, uh, Fortin had been pretty strong throughout the night, but kind of found himself a little bit further back and now even all the way towards the back as he gets tagged and turned around by the 25 machine. And then more contact as the 88 came in there, making nose contact with each other. Watch it back once again here for Guillaume. It's, it's not going to be the finish now that he thought tonight. Down into the corner, 25, just slight contact there. Not even really a lot of contact. Then he finished him off. AJ Rogers also in the Dixie products. He's going to get a little piece of that as... This will be now the third caution flag here of the evening. Bill Martin, Joe Schaefer, there you see it. One and two, then it's Justin Fuller, Mike Alexander, Brian Hacker, A.J. Rogers, Justin McDuff, Al Smith, Chris Stump, and Trey Edson, your top ten drivers currently. And this is going to set up another battle between Martin and Schaefer, and I think it may come down to this next restart. It is a very awkward restart zone. We've seen it catch our leaders out a few times, but... As this race has gone on, it's built built up a lot of marbles on that outside lane where the six of Schaefer Jr. is going to be launching from. So it's going to be hard for him to get the power down. But if he times this right and is able to get that launch out of the corner, he might be able to take the fight to the 39 of Bill Martin. So this, this, this whole race, I think, is going to be decided on this next restart because there's not going to be much time left after that. Yeah, Bill Martin didn't want to see that caution flag. Joe Schaefer obviously did. It's going to allow him to cool the tires off, and he will be able to fire back with that number six epic medium machine. Justin Fuller, Mike Alexander right there. You see right now the 75 of Alexander and the six of Schaefer. They're already up there running the high line. They're trying to push those marbles up the track as far as they can because when they do restart, they know that's where they're going to restart, and they don't want any of those marbles on the tires when we go racing. It'll be 10 laps to go here 
left in this one when the green flag does come back out. Martin and Shaver will do the side-by-side -side jig when we go back racing here as they work into turn number three, I believe. Or am I a little off here? I don't know. Pace car will dive in. Here we go. Racing once again. Ten to go. Great start from Martin. That's going to jump him out to a comfortable lead. And now Schaefer going to have to try to find his way to the bottom before the 51 of Fuller is able to get his nose in there. And he will be able to get himself clear. Oh, Fuller is going to lean on the 75 of Alexander on that inside line through three and four. But he is still going to hold on to third place. Alexander trying to make that outside line work, but it's not going to happen for him. He's going to drop back. And now Hacker going to try to work that inside line against them. Here comes the URL. Oh, one of them sideways. Turn around. AJ Rogers going to go up the banking in turns three and four. The Dixie products. Now they're going to pile them in. The 25 also coming to a rest of the inside groove there. Caution flag number four with eight laps to go. Oh, boy. We thought it was a shootout before. Kelly, it will be an even more of a shootout now when we go back racing with under five laps to go. And we've had such a long green flag run, pretty over a hundred laps, and then in cautions, as they say, breed cautions. Everyone got bunched back up together. They realized it's pretty much their their last opportunity to make any sort of move. So people are just battling hard for every sort of position, and that's kind of bringing out more cautions. But now these laps are going to tick away behind the pace car, and there's really not going to be much uh, much more opportunity to make a move. As we look back, it's Al Smith who initiated the contact here as we ride on board with A.J. Rogers. You see Smith go down to the inside and slight contact from the right front to the left rear of A.J. Rogers. And then that's also the number eight who's down to the inside retaining wall of Andy Lambert. We are going to get another car back on the lead lap, though. So that is an advantage for some of these guys with all these cautions. Brian Rogers Jr. going to get waved around. And there was not much time between him going around the pace car and him catching up to the tail end of this field, as we've mentioned. Very short track here tonight. Yeah, we started 26 uh, drivers here tonight. I'm just taking a quick peek at it. There's still 22 drivers left out onto the speedway. A couple drivers that are off the track. That's Andy Lambert, Drew Krybeck. Uh, Andrew Plank and Wade McDuff. Everybody else still out here as the lights on the iRacing pace car will go out. It'll be three lap shootout here to see who can pull off the win in the Arth Barber Shop 150. Again, gonna come down to this restart and Martin has got it timed pretty well. Schaefer, not a great start that last time. Hopefully he can make a good jump this time. He is gonna stay close to that 39, gonna keep his nose to the ins to the outside. Not gonna work though. Here comes the 51 of Justin Fuller. He's gonna get to the inside of the six. He wants to get himself back up towards the front into second place, and he is gonna make it work now. Just a nose ahead coming off the corner. Two laps to go. Two laps to go as the popsicle six fly. One of them gonna go around. Brian Hacker sideways. They're gonna pile him up off of turn number two. Guillaume is involved in a handful of other drivers here. Fifth caution coming out. That will take us to overtime. Yeah, we are gonna have a single attempt at a green-white checkered. And I think the driver that took the worst of it, Matthew Barkhouse, that was a hard hit for that 15 machine. And man, I am very glad we are on the simulator because you see him come off the corner. He gets tagged by the 11 and he just spears into the pit, pit wall attenuator. And that was a very hard hit. And if this was uh, not on the simulator, that would have absolutely destroyed that race car. Yeah, that was, uh, that's a hard hit, and that's not a hit you ever want to see a driver take in real life. Let's go cockpit view here with our old shed onboard camera here tonight with Matthew, Matthew Barkell says, there's the contact, and there, he was long for the ride, know where he was going to go, and all these drivers actually, a lot of them able to avoid being involved in that wreck. Yeah, a lot of drivers able to make it around, and keep going here and even those drivers that did get involved are able to keep moving as I'm the 15 of Matthew Barkos he's still rolling he's not come down pit road that car is beat up but he's going to try to limp it to the finish knowing that there's only a couple laps left once we go back green since it is only going to be a single uh, green white checkered attempt so if these guys immediately have another caution come out it will end the race so this is going to be guaranteed the last attempt yeah, and look at uh, Guillaume back here as the lights are still on on the iRacing pace car, so we'll take a couple more laps around here in the caution. Guillaume, most of the night, spending right there around the fifth, fourth position, hovering 
the driver out of Quebec City, the 20-year-old, now going to be buried a little bit deeper into the field. And heavy contact there, just like Barkhouse. He was involved in that wreck. So they're going to actually restart Barkhouse there at 7th, Guillaume at 8th. So we'll see if those drivers will be able to pick up any more positions. But a night that could have been a top 5 for Guillaume, now trying to look like salvage a top 10. Yeah, but this field will form back up for one last kick at the can. See if Bill Martin's going to be able to hold off Justin Fuller this time, who's going to be on the outside. Joe Schaefer now to the inside of row two, and Chris Stump actually somehow has worked his way up into fourth. Pace car down in the way, though. Bill Martin's going to go one last time. 87 going to get loose. Meta Eddie to the inside, and that's going to drop him all the way back. Yeah, Eddie going to drop through the field. Bill Martin, though, going to squirt out of turn number two down the back straight away. He's got the lead. Oh, Joe Schaefer with a little bit of a tap to the back bumper of the number 51 of Fuller. White flag is in the air. We will finish this one off under a green flag. It is Bill Martin that will lead us down the back straight away. 51 of Fuller is going to get loose. No one's going to be able to challenge. I hear a wreck further back in the field, but Bill Martin comes off turn four. He will win the Arts Barbershop 150 here at Southern National Motorsports Park. So as Martin comes across the line first, and it'll be Fuller, Joe Schaefer, Chris Stump, Brian Hacker, Guillaume Fortin. Then it's going to be Matthew Barkhouse, A.J. Rogers, Trey Etson, and Brett Bartels rallies to finish inside the top 10 here. One driver that took a hard nose into that uh, pit wall, that was Al Smith at the end. That's the spinning car that was to the inside. But how about Bill Martin? He will burn him down here on the front straightaway for your race fans in just a couple of minutes. The Dr. Noise, number 39 going to victory lane at least we can say at this point kelly the curse may be gone last time i was on the air like we said earlier he crashed the car this time he goes to victory lane yeah great drive from bill martin just another dominating win but he did have to work for it as he was kind of had to work his way through lap traffic as the drive as schaefer kind of started to close the gap but then we had all these cautions and every single time martin had to fend off the drivers on his outside and behind him and he was able to put the power down just a bit better than everyone else on these starts, and he has earned himself the win tonight. So as he pulls it into victory lane here on the front straightaway, we're going to take the quick step away here as it uh, looks like uh, Jimmy McIntyre doing some celebrating for Bill Martin over there on the infield. These boys just like to come out here and have fun. Race fans, don't go anywhere. The post-race show here for the Arts Barber Shop 150 is coming your way here in just a couple of seconds. Hear what Bill Martin Justin Fuller and Joe Schaefer have to say after this one. The Upstate Racing League Season 10 on the Turn 3 Racing Network is brought to you by Eddie's Meat Market. Nobody beats Eddie's Meat. Hanson Starter Shop. Racing Designs. CEG Dealer School. Train, Play, Consult. Energy Candy contains 100% of vitamins B6, B12, and C, plus ginseng. And the best part is no caffeine. Kabang Energy Candy is sold everywhere, including participating Walgreens. Kabang Energy Candy, it's bangalicious. Welcome back to Southern National Motorsports Park, where we are just wrapping up the Arts Barbershop 150 and caught up right away with our race winner here, Bill Martin. Bill, another fantastic race. You are our first multi-race winner of the season. How does it feel to uh, really kind of turn things around after that first race in Iowa? Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. I redid the computer. Everything's new and all the settings are stupid. Um. It feels great! Yeah! Yeah! I don't know. It feels it feels good. I was pretty psyched, actually, because this was properly the first time that I used the motion rig, and it didn't seem to inhibit my ability to stay 
uh, competitive, which is great, because I was really afraid that I was going to be all over the place. It's really disorienting when you first start using it, but um, it's surprising how much you can feel what the tires are doing, and I think it's a little bit of an advantage as far as keeping consistency going. It doesn't make you any faster, that's for sure, but but it might keep it might keep me going a little quicker than I'm used to, which is nice, uh, especially when Joe's following me, because usually in that situation, Joe would have just came up and passed me, so... Even if he did, though, it's a win. Well, tonight we had a very long green flag run, and because of how short this track was, you saw a lot of uh, of lap traffic. I mean, what was it like trying to work oh, your way through this field uh, throughout the night? Uh, it was difficult. Um, the thing is, is the lap traffic, once it got spread out, wasn't necessarily that much slower than the front guys were. In fact, AJ, who was in front of me for like 3,000 laps, um, as I was staying behind him, we were pulling away from second place. There's really no reason to pass him until I saw Joe's name pop up, and then I started pushing it to try to get around him, but I mean, he was going as fast as I was anyways until about the time that I went around him, so. Uh, but everybody else, they all got out of the way pretty decently. A few guys wanted to stay on the lead lap, so they were a little bit more ambitious, but there's a lot of respect in the league. Everybody gets out of the way when 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 a driver makes a an attempt. So it went all right. Well, three races left in the regular season. You will get the one drop week, which uh, at this point, I'm assuming it's going to be Iowa for you. How are you feeling about your chances of getting into the chase and really making a, a run for the championship? Um, it's important that I win the championship so that. Uh, so that Al has to pay me to make my own car. <laughs> I guess that makes sense. You are our, uh, our replica maker for the season. And as as we always say, the, uh, the champion does get a replica of his car. And yeah, I suppose if you win it, you're making your own car and someone's paying you to do it. So I guess that is a very good uh, motivating factor. That's the only reason I need to win the championship. I don't care otherwise. It's just that... It doesn't matter to me also who wins as long as it's not Joe, because I made Joe's car silver, and it makes it really complicating to make that into a diecast, so Joe can't win either. <laughs> Alright, so <laughs> we now know uh, Bill Martin's motivation, but Bill, thanks for coming out and talking to us, and you've been here a few times, you know the song and dance, who do you wish to thank before you let we let you go tonight? Well, thanks to Joe and Drew and Tommy, our teammates, for hanging out with us while we were racing while joe obviously was hanging out and drew but drew drew cut out early on, on, on the track and he always hangs out has a good time even when he gets into crashes um so thanks to the posse members and thank you guys for wasting your time interviewing me uh thanks to al for hopefully future paying me to make my own car all right, well, thanks for coming out and stopping by with us. Congratulations again on the race win, Bill, and <laughs> hopefully we'll hear from you again next week because uh, it's always a good time when we get to talk to you here in the in the, uh, in the interview. Well, thanks, guys. Uh, have a good night. All right, so that was driver of the number 39, Bill Martin, our winner of the Arts Barbershop 150. And now moving along, I believe we are going to go to Justin Fuller. Yeah, I have caught up with the driver of the Aftermath Motorsports, number 51 of Justin Fuller. Justin, a long green flag run here in the middle of the event, but damage on the nose of this Ford Mustang early on in a crash. Did that damage really hamper the performance of this 51 on the long run? Uh, I'd like to say it did, honestly. we uh, I participated in a, a, not a, not a big event, but an event at this track uh, a couple weeks ago, 300 laps. And I was not that bad on the long run. Uh, and I never got that tight either. So um, the, the right front was just completely obliterated on the car. And it just wouldn't turn after that. So uh, I think it did. Uh, I don't I don't think I was any better than second or third place tonight anyway. Uh, I think Bill had us covered regardless. So, um, yeah, I would have I liked that I had damage. I'll see what I could have done. Well, tonight, you know, we've... We got a little bit of a short run there at the end. The car obviously wasn't good at the uh, on the long run stages of this one. Did you have anything for Bill Martin here on the final little segment? Yeah, um, the only thing I could have done was move him. Uh, but even then, it would have uh, 
could have resulted in spinning them out, and then I had to go to the back and I had to lose spots. So it's, it's not worth it at the end, you know. Um, he, I mean, he was the class of the field all night. He led 116 laps, so uh, I don't think there's really any, any denying him tonight. Well, you finished second. You're, you were sick coming tonight into the championship points. And, you know, a couple drivers like Hacker and Alexander and Schaefer will now finish ahead of you. So those points that you gain for finishing P2 will really hope or help before we get to the championship chase. Are you looking forward to the final three races? Will we be able to see this number 51 into victory lane before the championship chase starts? Um, well, I mean, unless I qualify eighth next week at Oxford, uh, we won't be winning that event because whoever qualifies eighth there is going to have a really good shot at that one. Uh, Martinsville, I like that track. North Wilkes are a big fan of that one as well. So, um, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see. The competition in this field is uh, bar none. Uh, it's up there. So, uh, these wins don't come easy, that's for sure. And uh, I think that's what makes it uh, a lot of fun up front, for sure. We all have a lot of respect up front, race clean. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Well, you have one win this season and another podium finish here and a stack on top of that. Justin, we'll roll the red carpet out here for you. Hand you the microphone. I'm going to step back six feet because of COVID-19, but uh, who do you got to thank for this Aftermath Motorsports entry finishing P number two? Yeah, I just want to thank uh, all my teammates uh, at Aftermath Motorsports. Trey is the only one, Trey Eaton, he's the only one that races with me over here. Uh, so I want to send a shot to him. Uh, also for keeping, keeping my cars looking good. He always paints up my cars, so I uh, got to thank him for that. Thank Art, Arts Barbershop for putting on the race. And uh, thank you guys for on the broadcast. Uh, everybody at uh, Upstate Racing League, all the admins and all the work that they do to put this on. It's a great, great race. I think we only had, what, five yellows for 150 laps. I think that's a, that's a testament to how good this field actually is and clean. And uh, it's a lot of fun. Thank Personal Comfort, Better Number Better, Better Price, uh, my, my sponsor. Um, I have their product. I use it every night. And it's the best sleep of my life. So. Um, if you're looking for a, a number bed, check them out for sure. And uh, thank everybody for watching. It's my, I think my dad watched, so it's been a shout out to him. It's everybody else that watched, you know, too. So, I, you know, I'm glad we could put on a show for you. Hopefully, I'll go back and watch the broadcast tomorrow. And uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see you next week at Oxford. There you heard it from the second place finisher here tonight, the Aftermath Motorsports driver, the number 51, Justin Fuller, will come back to rally to finish second with a banged up nose piece on that machine. But second place is pretty good. But Kelly, I believe you're standing by with the driver who finishes P number three tonight. Yeah, caught up now with Joe Schaefer Jr. Joe, you come home in third, but you fin you started the race in eighth and had to make a few passes, not only for position, but also to get by lap traffic. And well, how was it really making passes here on this track tonight? Well, a couple of them I didn't have to work too hard for. Uh, when Mike got loose, I took a run on his high side and he pretty much rolled over for me. So that one helped. And then uh, towards the end there coming up on Justin, I think he knew he was burned out. And uh, once I got a run, he let me go too. Um, it's it's getting real old starting seventh eighth every week um wouldn't trade the qualifying points but man if you can't get a couple free spots you know from restarts or being in the right lane it it's it's hard to uh to keep the tires on it the whole day we had a very long green flag run throughout pretty much the the majority of this race and how hard is it to keep your focus and keep your consistency over that long of a run and also kind of manage your tire wear for that long? So luckily I was able to kind of keep it in a rhythm. Um, we caught a lot of the lap traffic at a good time. Um, and for a while there, I was kind of gauging my, my entry speed based on, based on what was happening in front of me. So that kind of helped. Um, really, I was just kind of focusing on not sliding the rear tires on exit. Um, kind of knew I was going to need that grip at the end and, and those cautions at the end did not help me um, I think when I got to second you know, I was kind of, I, I felt like I had something for Bill um, but it was going to take me 15 laps and I obviously wasn't going to move him to do it um, and just yeah, it was, it was tough sledding on the outside when we got those rapid fire restarts at the end Well, next week we move on to Oxford Plains and Throughout the years, we've seen a lot of uh, a lot of sparks fly there. What are you kind of expecting from that track next week? Oxford's one of my favorite tracks. Um, 
one of those tracks that requires a ton of throttle discipline, um, just like Langley, just like the Bull Ring. Um, get a couple lucky breaks and uh, get my, find myself in the right lane on some early restarts and maybe get some some passes without burning it up. Um, I like my chances at Oxford. Um, it's just one of those. It's one of those tracks that you know, I hated for a long, long time, and now that it clicks, I, I can't get enough, and I love racing there. All right. Well, hopefully we will see you there next week. And before we let you go tonight, though, who do you wish to thank for your third place run? Well, I thank the posse, um, Al at Upstate, you guys for doing the broadcast. And uh, as always, I'll shoot out shout out Drew Cryback with Epic Media for uh, always supporting all my sim racing. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming and talking to us, Joe. And hopefully we'll hear from you again next week. Have a good night. Hope so, too. Thank you, guys. That was Joe Schaefer Jr., driver of the number six machine and our third place finisher here tonight. And Roger, a very fun race, a really long green flag run and just a, a, a little bit of chaos at the end. But honestly, throughout the whole night, had a lot of fun. Yeah, it was a great night of racing here with the Upstate Racing League here tonight for the Arts Barber Shop 150 from the Southern National Motorsports Park. I mean, what more do you want? Short track racing action here. I racing some of the best racers like, you know, Bill Martin, Justin Fuller, Joe Schaefer. You got to think of some of the other guys that maybe had a little bit of a down night. AJ Hamill, Andy Lambert, Drew Kryback. They finished a little bit deeper into the field than they would have liked. You know, Matt McLean and Al Smith, we talked about them earlier on about being right there on the bubble of the championship standings. They came in just uh, looks like 11 points out of the championship hunt. Well, let's take a quick look here at our results for the night and check where they ended up actually finishing next. Or that's the wrong thing. Let's get the feature event here from the truck if we can. And there it is. There's your unofficial feature results. Take a look at where Al Smith finished. 14th place here tonight. Matt McLean, where did he finish? Well, the Mad Racer right behind him in 15. So those two are still going to be locked into a heated battle for possibly trying to get up there and battle into the championship chase that's coming up here in just a handful of weeks. That gap there, Trey Edson, Guillaume Horton, and then it's Al Smith, Matt McClain, A.J. Rogers. That gap is getting even closer as the races count down. Yeah, we're going to have to wait and see once the uh, the points are officially confirmed and updated. But another thing to keep in mind, though, is we do have that one drop week, and that will come into effect before the last race of a regular season, which will be on January 7th. So between that point, there is still two more races. You can drop either of those or even any of the ones previous to this. It'll be the worst result that has dropped. And one driver that will drop a race tonight, that's going to be Steph Marinak, who ended up having to miss tonight. Yeah, that's unfortunate. He came in as the championship leader, so we'll see where, you know, obviously he'll get to drop this one and he'll just try and forget about it and move on to the next one, which that is coming up just next Thursday night. Kelly, you'll be back on the call. KR Stolfus will be back with you for that one. Uh, that'll be a, a good sigh of relief, I guess. Well, a little bit of a return to normalcy, but before we go here tonight, I think we should do a quick rundown of our starting or our finishing positions and so the people at home maybe get to f see where their favorite driver wound up. I mean, we know who our first three were, but we still had a total of 26 drivers take the main event tonight. As we get the truck to scroll back, that finishing order there, you heard from the top three. There you see fourth, though, was Chris Stump. Brian Hacker was fifth here tonight. Guillaume Fortin is going to rally back to finish sixth. How about Matthew Barkhorse? Barkhouse, sorry, he uh, he got into the uh, inside wall there, pit road, and he finishes still in the seventh spot. AJ Rogers is eighth, Trey Edson finishes ninth, and Brett Bartels rounds out our top ten machines here tonight. Brian Rogers Jr., who ended up having to race his way through the LCQ, getting to be the uh, the top finisher of those LCQ fin uh, drivers, comes home in eleventh. Twelfth will go to Justin McDuff. 13th, Mike Alexander, Al Smith Jr., as we mentioned, finishes 14th with Matt McLean right behind him. Those are the last cars on the lead lap. Matt Eddy will be our first car, a lap down in 16th. Jeremy Carpenter comes home 17th. 18th will go to Justin Smith, Jimmy McIntyre Jr. in 19th, and Colin Phillip in 20th.
Speedy will round out into the 21st position with A.J. Hamill in 22nd. 23rd goes to Andy Lambert. Drew Krybeck going to come home 24th. 25th to Andrew Plank. And the last machine here tonight will be Wild Wayne McDuff in his number one machine. He'll round out the 26th car field here that took the feature green flag. And, wow, 26 cars, short track racing, five caution flags here tonight. Your winner still going to be shown as Bill Martin. We got to thank all you race fans, though, tonight that tuned in here to the Turn 3 Racing Network to watch the race here for the Arts Barber Shop 150. We appreciate each and every one of you tuning in here. For everybody at the Upstate Racing League, Kelly Dahl over here, I'm Roger Muth and the whole Turn 3 group. We appreciate you tuning in, and we can't wait to see all you race fans back next Thursday or see you at the races coming up. The Upstate Racing League Season 10 on the Turn 3 Racing Network is brought to you by Butt Kicker. Feel what you've been missing. Arts Barbershop. R&R &R Auto.